I'm Erin from Fabricate. Today I'm going to show you how to install the Axial Fan on your Ultimaker 3 or Ultimaker 3 Extended print head. Now before we begin, you're going to want to go ahead and unplug your printer and make sure that you have your 2mm hex screwdriver handy. If you've already removed the print head from your printer, go ahead and fast forward to minute 2.5. We're going to remove the print head from the printer. Now to start, you're going to need to unscrew the two screws at the rear of the print head. We'll go ahead and set these aside. Next, we're going to remove the clamp clips from underneath the collets. Just slide them forward. Be careful not to drop them. <laughs> now, apply downward pressure to the collet and pull up on the Bowden tube. Do the same thing to the other Bowden tube. Downward pressure and up. Next, we'll go ahead and take the screwdriver and stick it in the hole at the back of the print head. This will let you remove that cover. Now, if your print head looks like this, with no tabs between the two halves of the cover and a taller part on the upward bit, then you're going to need to go ahead and pull it off vertically going up rather than sliding it back. All right, I've moved the print head to the side to make this a little easier to see. So we're going to fold back the cable a bit and you see that small white rectangular piece? You're going to get your screwdriver underneath it and apply pressure to the side to help it release the clamp because that clip is what's holding it in place. There you go. Next we have to remove the print head shafts. I like to start with the Y shaft. Tilt the rear sliding block forward so that you can release the Y shaft. Do the same thing with the front sliding block and pull the whole print head shaft forward out through the front of the printer. Next, you're going to do the same process on the left and right sliding blocks. And go ahead and turn the print head slightly diagonal to pull it off. Next, we're going to remove your front fan. So you'll need your 2mm hex head screwdriver and you'll want to remove these four screws. So next, open the bracket, otherwise the magnets are going to catch on the screws, and we'll slowly take apart the print head. Now, unplug the side fan, your other side fan, next, the red and white cable is your capacitive sensor cable, and last, your axial fan. We'll set the top part of the print head aside, and we'll go ahead and remove your side fans. These can be set aside as we won't need them for a little while. Now turn the whole thing over, and go ahead and open the plastic bracket. This will free the metal tabs from the pegs inside the plastic bracket. Now flip it over, and you'll note along the right hand side, the black and white cable runs through this metal guard. Use your screwdriver to pry the metal guard up. And this will free your fan cable. I'll set that out of the way. Next, there's two screws on the interior of the metal bracket. I'll move the capacitive cable so you can see clearly. Now we're going to go ahead and unscrew these two screws. All right. That frees your front bracket from the capacitive sensor parts. Now we can go ahead and slide out your fan. And there you have it. Now I'm going to show you how to install the front fan. You want the label facing you away from the grill. The cable needs to be on the right hand side and you'll note two holes at the top of the fan. These will line up with two pegs on the inside of the front plastic bracket. Slide the fan underneath the magnets and overlay the holes on the pegs so that you can press it down flat. Make sure the cable is running on this groove on the right hand side. This will prevent the cable from getting pinched when you attach the capacitive parts. Now, I like to go ahead and put the screw through the hole before lining the parts up. I think it's a little easier. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So then line it up, 
and let's go ahead and screw this together. We'll do the second screw now. All right. Now we'll go ahead and make sure the black and white cable is seated under the metal flap and go ahead and bend the metal flap back into place. Next, we'll take your side fan bracket and your front bracket, and we're going to go ahead and reinsert the little holes into the pegs on the plastic bracket. So get the first peg in there, and then go ahead, pull the bracket open, and you can see the second peg. It'll be a little bit of a tight fit. And you want to make sure that the, it hinges nicely and that both of your cables are up inside the side fan bracket where they're not going to get pinched. We'll insert your radial fan with the label towards the plastic. Make sure to tuck the extra length of wire behind it. The other thing to note is that the opening for your fan should be at the bottom. So label to the side, opening to the bottom, extra length of cable behind the fan. Alright, now we're ready for the top portion of the print head again. We're going to want to make sure that we're routing all of these fans behind to the back of the print head and making sure not to pinch any of the cables. So let's make sure that the front bracket is down so that the magnets are out of the way. We've got all the cables pinned back. Now they do try to squirm a little bit, so be careful. So let's go ahead and set it more or less into position. It's extremely important that the fan cable and capacitive sensor cables are routed on top of the metal bracket and not behind it. If you prefer, you can always flip the print head over and arrange the cables looking at the back side. So, all right, let's plug in the red and white capacitive sensor into the second port from the left. Next, we'll do the axial fan in the third port from the left. Now the last two, slots one and four, will be the side fans. Now, all right, everything's plugged in. Let's give it a last check to make sure all of the wires are tucked out of the way. All right, everything fits together. We'll go ahead, hold that in place, and screw those screws back in. There's the first one, two, three, four. Right, the print head has now been reassembled. We can install it back in the printer. We're going to go ahead and install the print head back in the printer now. So you want the longer of your two print head shafts, this will be the X shaft. You're going to go ahead and put that straight through the print head. Right. Turn it a little bit diagonally so that you can go ahead and get the print head shaft in there between the belts, and rest it on top of your sliding blocks on the left and right. Now we're going to go ahead and make sure that the print head shaft is far enough to the left, otherwise it won't trigger the end stop. I like to use about a finger's nail's width between the left side of the print head shaft and the wall. It's important to make sure the sliding block and print head shaft are perpendicular. If it's tilted, it will cause problems later. Now do the one on the left. The print head shaft should always make a satisfying click when seating into the sliding block. Now we'll slide your Y shaft in the front panel between the two halves of the belt. Skewer it through the print head and seat it in the sliding blocks. For the rear block, you want to make sure that the print head shaft rear is aligned with the back of the block. If you put it too far back, it will crash into the Z shafts. Click it in place. Now go ahead, click the front in place. Again, make sure the shafts are perpendicular with the blocks. A tilted block will come loose later. Now reinsert your Bowden tubes. Take your clamp clips, 
We're going to go ahead and slide those underneath the collet. If you ever lose your clamp clips, it's very easy to print more. There they go. All right now, we'll go ahead and reseat the printhead cable. So, in general, you should be able to go ahead and just press it back down into place. If you're not sure that it quite clicked back into place, you can always take your screwdriver and apply a little pressure to each side of the large plastic connector and make sure that it's seated. It should click into place. Take the little cover, make sure to feed the tabs underneath. That should slide right back into place. Now again, if your print head looks like this, instead of coming across, you're going to want to slide it down from the top until it fits. Now all we need to do is go ahead and screw the print head screws back in. And there you go.